divine focus. We've come to understand that when we say focus, we are talking about the center of interest of an activity. And so it is talking about giving much attention to that which matters. It's talking about stem. It's talking about things that hold other things together, the center. And we said we will better understand the word focus if we see the opposite of focus. And we saw that when we talk about the opposite of focus, we are talking about someone who is unmindful, someone who is unconcerned, someone who disregards. Someone who is inattentive. And so, when we are talking about focus, we should see the opposite of things we have just mentioned. So, we should be mindful, which also talks about remembering, having things in your mind. And keep thinking about it. We've seen many scriptures but we will continue with Hebrews chapter 12, verse number 1 and then 2. We said we were reading to 5. But we will consider verse number 2 because today we are not using um, the Bima. And so Let me read from this scripture, this Bible version, Hebrews chapter number two, uh, 12, sorry, Hebrews chapter number 12. We are reading from verse number one coming. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses who by faith have testified to the truth of God's absolute faithfulness. Stripping off every unnecessary weight and the sin which so easily and cleverly Cleverly entangles us. Let us run with endurance and active persistence the race that is set before us. Verse 2 Looking away from all that will distract us and focusing our eyes on Jesus. Who is the author and perfecter of faith, the first insensitive for our belief, and the one who brings our faith to maturity, who for the joy of accomplishing the goal set before him endured the cross disregarding the shame and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God revealing his deity his authority and the completion of his work verse 3 let us consider Just as just consider and meditate on him who endured from sinners 
such bitter hostility against himself. Consider it all in comparison with your trials so that you will not grow weary and love and lose heart. Verse 4. You have not yet struggled to the point of shedding blood in your struggle against sin. Verse 5. And you have forgotten the divine word of encouragement which is addressed to you as sons. My son, do not make light of the discipline of the Lord and do not lose heart and give up when you are corrected by him. Amen. Amen. We thank God for the readings of his word. Divine focus. Divine focus. If you consider all that we have heard, it's telling us to learn from someone who has been where we are now and we are about to be. Amen. Amen. The Bible is using Jesus as a role model. And the Bible says we should fix our eyes on him. We should look away from many things and everything that easily mislead us. And look unto Christ, who is the author and the perfecter of our faith. Christ is the altar and the perfecter of our faith. Hallelujah. Amen. And so, if you look at Christ, you can emulate his lifestyle. But before I build it up, let me say one or two things to ask to help us. Who wrote the book of Hebrews? There are debates that all point to Apostle Paul. Amen. Amen. Apostle Paul did not see Jesus one on one like you and I see in ourselves. But some of the apostles saw Jesus one on one. Peter saw him, the 12 apostles all saw. Mary Magdalene, name them. If somebody was to speak this way and say, fix your eyes on Jesus, it should come from someone who saw Jesus physically. Hello? It is my prayer, those online and those who watch the video, whether on Facebook, wherever, and those under the sound of my voice, it is my prayer we come to the knowledge of truth and may the doors of our heart be opened and may the doors of faith be opened unto us. I pray that we understand what we are sharing that will bring you to where God wants you to be, that you will not be tossed to and fro. Because there are things that are pushing people from the faith. Like our sister said during the intercession, if you are not careful, you will fall. If you are not careful, you will fall out of the faith. There are things, when you do them well today, it will guarantee you being strong and steadfast tomorrow. There are prayers and things, if you do well today, it will help you to elude or avoid or escape certain traps ahead of you. And so all depend on how you do it today. Are you with me? 
And so it is my prayer we come to that knowledge and understanding. Hallelujah. Because that knowledge and understanding will lead us and help us to become what God wants us to be. The reason why you need to get this is becoming what God wants you to be. Come and be where God, where God wants you to be. From now till there, there are challenges. There are difficulties that you need to endure. You will go through many things. Physical, spiritual, psychological, emotional. There will be challenges that will make you abort your faith, abort your belief, abort your confession, abort your dream, abort your plan. But when God or Jesus is part of it, he will be the center and he will hold it fast. And when the center is strong, things will not fall apart. For things fall apart because the center cannot hold. But if Jesus is in the center of your life, you will not fall. I talk, I hear some amen. amen. If Jesus is the focus of your life, you will not fall. Amen. Let me tell you before I continue to explain to you what I'm trying to say. The things that make people fall are not the things that come to threaten us. The things that make people fall are not the things that come with force. There are things that come with deception. And before you come to yourself, you've committed yourself into it. It is my prayer that we will not make that mistake. Decision and choices are very tough moments of man's life. And these are the times the devil used to have his way in the life of a child of God who is not steadfast. Before I continue to explain to you Apostle Paul and Peter and other things, I want you to understand the parable about the ten virgins. There were five who were called wise and there were five who were called fools. The reason why they were called fools does not mean they were not virgins. They were still virgins. The difference between the wise and the fool is the wise went through extra mile, sacrificed many things to get double for the better tomorrow. And the fools thought, mm, this will be enough. Let them be. They, they, they like stressing themselves too much, going through all this. Let them be. Uh, they took life easy. And they missed the flight. Mm -hmm. How? They did not calculate well. And they did not understand that life is uncertainty. Anything can happen. All expected can come. And so when you are planning life and you don't have Jesus who holds your future, you will be short-sighted because the way you will see it, it will be so easy for you to think about and conclude over it now. And when it strike to this place, you can't go further because you only plan for now here. But Jesus will tell you, he says, go! To the other side, the storm will come, but he did not tell you the storm because you have him on board. He is still part of you. You did not leave him behind because you are focused. You are staring at him. The word focus also means staring. Do not blink your eyes. Stare. Look at, look at, look at. Don't turn to the left, don't turn to the right. You stare. Look at, look at. Focus. 
And so if Jesus is not there, how can you stay? If you have left him behind, how can you stay? You cannot see him. You need to go back. And so the ten virgins had to go back and pick Jesus up. They had to go back and get the oil. And so they can get light. I remember where I had my national service back home. One summary. It's very bottomless bed. And one day, I had to come from my station back home. And where, you know, cars don't come there often because the way it's accepted that the, the car, was it even a car? Let me just say vehicle. It wasn't a car, but a vehicle. You know, it takes, it, 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 it comes there from 6 or 4 p.m. and stays and leaves 2 a.m. midnight. And so it can bring you to the city. And so only one a day. If you miss it, you have to stay. And that day, I was coming back home. The road was rough. And so, that car or that vehicle had to stop about five miles away. And so, I had to walk through villages, village by village, village by village. And I didn't know there. So, some of my friends said, we will take you there and we will come back. Walking about five miles. What they even talk five miles? <laughs> I'm not sure it was five miles, but ten miles. You will walk and you feel the pain on your feet. And we didn't have lights in that place. And so fortunately one of us was having a touch light. But the battery was not strong enough. And so he would just put the light on, throw on the way, and we see about 100 meter or 50 meter or 10, 20 meter ahead of us, then he will put it out to save the battery. He put it on, we were going, and something struck him to put the torch on. When he put the torch, we were, there's about four of us, we were online like this, walking together. Just, just about a quarter a meter, not even half a meter, just here and there. When he threw the light, there was a big, thick, long snake. Can you imagine, the head of the snake has entered the other side of the road and the bottom was still the other side. Do you think if we had light before then, we would get that close to the snake? May your light never go off. Jesus is the light of the world. Leaving him behind, you walk in darkness. We need him on board. And by God's grace, by God's grace, we were all freezed, but we stood still when the snake passed. And we move on. And so henceforth, whether we like it or not, the light must be on. And we were all not born again. We were born against. We were against what the Bible says. We live our life opposite the Bible. So you are against, you are rebellious. But God was merciful. Amen. May God be merciful unto us. Until the time he brings us to his perfect will. All along he had prepared me for this puppet. But I was messing up. May the purpose of your existence be made known. And may you not die before your time. I thought I heard some amen. amen. And so coming back to tell you, 
It was Paul who did not have one-on-one -on -one encounter with Jesus, who wrote what we just read and say, fix your eyes on Jesus. So what is he talking about? Is he talking about this colo colo eye and that is talking about sight? No. If you have to fix your eyes on Jesus, where do you see him? How do you find him? Because Jesus is a spirit being. And so the Bible says we should fix our eyes on Jesus. And the Bible makes it clear, the letter kill, but the spirit give it life. And so if you just read what is written as many religions, just read and interpret them. No, behind the black and white is the handwriting, is the revelation, is the intention of the writer. But it will take the spirit of God to reveal to you what the writer is trying to say. Apostle Paul says, fix your eye on Jesus. Where is Jesus? And so you have to know he is not talking about physical things. Who is Jesus? The word of God. Amen. Amen. In those days, if you read the Bible in the book of John, in the book of Daniel, you see that when the Jews were praying in captivity, when Daniel was taken into Babylon and other people, they would open their windows in the direction they think is facing Jerusalem. Why? Because God has promised King Solomon. And that whoever comes to this temple and pray, I will show mercy. And so they have to look for where the direction they can face Jerusalem. So they will face and imagine the building, the temple, and pray and believe. God will answer them. But today, the temple works with us. The Bible says, destroy this temple and in three days. I will raise it up. And he, Jesus, was talking about himself. Is he here? I am with you till the end of this age. He is here. And so how do you see him? Look back. No. Look on the left. No. Look on the right. No. Look in the inside of you. Do you have the word of God in you? Bring it out concerning your situation, concerning what you are going through, concerning what is happening around you. And hold fast to the word. And I tell you, you are staring at Jesus. You are focusing on Jesus. Because the word is Christ. Amen. Amen. Divine focus. Simply means focus on the word. You cannot see Jesus visibly. You cannot see him physically. But he is with us. And so Paul was not talking about trying to imagine and have a figure before you trying to imagine, imagine, imagine. Ah, he looks tall. Uh, 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 he looks short. He, no, 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 no. Fixing your eyes on Jesus is fixing your eyes on the word. The Bible says that word became flesh and dwells among us. And even God, the Father, did not do anything he did outside the word. If you read Psalm 136, I think, the Bible says he has exalted his word and his name above all things. If you read another Psalm, the Bible says he has exalted his word even above his name. And so divine focus, we are telling ourselves to hang on the word of God. Amen. Amen. Hang on to the word of God. Because something can, you know, there are things that easily, they easily, can we now use the bima? Try, try, and come to church in time, please. Because I was thinking, you know, we have more than enough hands and no one is there to fix the demon. May the Lord have mercy. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's read it. Hebrews chapter 12. And so, God wants us to focus. God wants us to focus. But not on physical image. We will see that next Sunday when we read the Ten Commandments. 
God does not want us to see him through any image. Cross, photos, no. No. Let me show you something in Luke, Luke 30, uh, 24. Let me show you something in Luke. First. Is it working? Yes. Let's see first Luke 24. Let's read verse number. It's not part of my message, but let me tell you why. You don't have to see God or Jesus physically, but you have to see him through the word. Amen. Amen. Let's read from verse number 12. Verse number 12. Luke 24. Peter, however, got up and ran to the tomb. Let's go to verse 14. Let me see 14. Okay, let's start from here. Together there were that we are talking about the disciples going to Emmaus. After Jesus' resurrection. Together they were discussing everything that had taken place. Uh-huh. And while they were discussing and arguing, Jesus himself, Jesus himself came near and began to walk along with them. Jesus himself. Jesus himself. It means the one they knew because they were also part of his team. Amen. Amen. But they were prevented from recognizing him. Who prevented them? I have taught you this before because his era with the flesh had ended. He had died, resurrected. You understand because I have taught on God's agenda, the state where we are now, the rapture, the antichrist, the tribulation, the great tribulation. I have taught you all these. There are three things I'm yet to touch, and you will understand these things better. The judgment, the resurrection, the new heaven, the new earth. And maybe finally the second death. What you need to understand is every flesh has its realm. And this flesh we have can never abide or endure any other realm apart from the earth. And so the flesh Jesus had was the earthly flesh that will make everyone to see him in this life. But after his resurrection, it was done. And so you don't expect to see Jesus physically anymore. If he wills, he can show himself to you. But whether he shows himself or not does not limit him. Amen. Amen. And so people who are dependent on physical evidence to see Jesus before they believe, they will wait till eternity. Because Jesus does not want you to see him physically. He wants you to see him in this world. The people were arguing, talking, and Jesus himself came to join them. Then he asked them, what is it, this dispute that you are having with each other? As you are walking, and they stopped walking and looked, discouraged, and what happened? The one named Cleopas answered him, are you the only visitor in Jerusalem who doesn't know the things that happened there in these days? What things? What things? Jesus asked them. So they said to him, the things concerning Jesus, 
the Nazarene, who was a prophet, they speak about him in the past. Who was powerful? Who was in action? Who was speech before God and all the people? And they were talking to Jesus himself. And they were talking to Jesus himself. Today he can come to this room and if care is not taken, you will not find him. But whoever accepts hospitality and loves people for who they are will end up ministering to Jesus, having an encounter with Jesus, and he will bless it. The people saw Jesus himself. They had sat with him, ate with him, drank with him, and they did not see him because they were prevented. Since the curtain was open, since the body gave way, that era ended. And so every eye that want to see Jesus physically is blindfolded. You cannot. Praise the Lord. Are you in church? Yes. So learn to see Jesus through the direction he is going to give these two disciples. And it will help you. And how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be sent to death. And they crucified him. But we were hoping that he was the one who was about to redeem Israel beside all these is the third day since these things happened. He is a history now. Moreover, some women from our group astounded us. They arrived early at the tomb. And when they didn't find his body, they came and reported that they had seen a vision of angel who said he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said. But we did not believe. <laughs> that is what it means. But we did not believe. And listen to what Jesus said to them. How unwise. Other verses say, how foolish and slow you are to believe in your heart all that the prophet has spoken. How foolish to think you will still see Jesus with your physical eyes. How foolish and unwise to look for Jesus outside the Bible. And how did he reveal himself to them? Didn't the Messiah have to suffer these things and enter his glory? Then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted for them the things concerning himself in the scripture, in the Bible. So they would know him from the Bible and know where he is so they can gaze at him. If you want to find him, read the Bible. If you want to find him, read the word of God. He revealed to them all about himself from the scriptures. Let's move to 44. Verse 44 and 45. It's not part of my message though. Then Jesus told them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, physically. And that everything written, written, written about me in the Bible, in the law of Moses, the prophet, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Everything written about me, everything written about me. If you want to know me, read about me. There are things written about me and not just part, everything written about me. Amen. Amen. You go to church, you don't read your Bible. <laughs> you are a common Christian. You don't need to grow to read your Bible, the youth. You don't need to grow. 
before you start reading your Bible. Remember, in our youth conference, you remember the team. Remember your maker in the days of your youth. Verse 25. Then he opened their minds so they will see him so they can understand the scriptures. Is there any other verse? And he said unto them, Thus it is written that the Christ should suffer and rise again from the dead the third day. Amen. Amen. And so he opened their minds, meaning their hearts, so they will understand the scriptures. This is how we gaze at Jesus. This is how we stare at Jesus. This is how we fix our eyes on Jesus. This is how we focus on Jesus. How do we? By staring into the word. By meditating upon the word. Because you cannot carry the word everywhere you go in. But when you read with understanding, it leaves it, it itself in your heart. And you carry it wherever you go. And you think about them over and over again. We call it meditation. We call it meditation. You meditate upon it and you think about Jesus, the beauty of Jesus. You don't think about his person. You don't think about his height. We don't think about anything but that which is written about him for us. Amen. Amen. Did you come to church? Yes. And so when Paul was saying, focus on Jesus, fix your eyes on Jesus, he was not talking about imagery. He was not talking about physical sight. He was talking about finding him in the world. Amen. And so before we close, let's see what God said to Joshua. In Joshua chapter 1 verse number 8. Let's read from um, From verse 5, and we are bringing the service to a close. Joshua chapter 1, from verse 5. No one will be able to stand against you if you fix your eyes on the world. As long as you live, if you fix your eyes on the world, no one will be able to stand up against you. I will be with you if you fix your eyes on the world. Just as I was with Moses, if you fix your eyes on the world, I will not leave you or forsake you if you fix your eyes on the world. If you carry the world along in meditation, you've carried me on board, and I won't leave you. Leaving you is your choice. If you stop thinking about me, recalling me, and also meditating on me, the world, You've left me behind. The next verse. Be strong and courageous, for you will distribute the land I swore to their fathers to give them as an inheritance. Verse 7. Above all, be strong and, and very courageous to carefully Observe the whole instruction my servant Moses commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right. Do not turn from it to the left. If you obey it, that you will have success wherever you go. So you don't stay at one place. You will go somewhere, but you will still have success wherever you go. How? Verse 8. Because you meditate on the word. You carry him on board. This book of instruction. So the instruction Moses gave was about the book. This book of instruction must not depart from your mouth. Speak it. You are to recite it day and night. Speak and hear the word. 
speak and hear. Haven't I taught you that when you are even praying, don't make all your prayers silence prayers. Haven't I said it? Pray and hear yourself. Pray. Don't turn all your prayers to tongues. Don't turn all your prayers to singing. Don't turn all your prayers to silence. Pray and hear yourself. So that you may carefully observe, because when you hear, you remember everything written in it. For then you will prosper and succeed in whatever you do and wherever you go. Amen. 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 Christ to you. God bless you. Hallelujah. I want you to understand that everything the Bible spoke in the old 